Okay, um, I'd like to thank the organizers for inviting me to speak. Um, so I'm going to talk about this paper that appeared uh, on the archive then uh, with my student Shovik. Um, and the basic idea is we're going to uh, give a new duality for some geometric quantity in ADS-CFT called the entanglement wedge cross-section. So let me just very quickly define to you uh, what the entanglement wedge cross-section is. So think about a situation, say uh, ADS-3. I'm going to draw all my pictures as if it was ADS-3. This is a time slice of ADS-3. But actually, this, the whole story generalizes um, to, to, to any dimension uh, and any, any kind of region. Uh, but in ADS-3, we can think about entanglement. Uh, and if we think about some uh, disconnected boundary region, A union B, uh, and we think about a situation where the entanglement wedge uh, is non-trivial, that means it, it's sort of connected in the bulk. So here's a picture of that. So here's A and B, uh, and the Rutaki-Nagi surfaces are the, uh, these red curves here. Um, uh, and in this, in this situation, you can define uh, the entanglement wedge cross-section, which just intuitively, informally, is just the minimal cut through this entanglement wedge, through this blue region, that splits uh, the two boundary regions, A and B. Um, <clears throat> And it's the area of that minimal cut. Uh, so more, uh, more precisely, what you do is you take the minimal surface, you split it into two regions, gamma A, gamma B, arbitrarily. Uh, and then you find a minimal surface uh, that ends on gamma A union A. So gamma A union A is here, and that's the minimal surface. Uh, and then you minimize over all possible cuts like that, and you end up with this cross-section. Um, OK, so that's, that's what we're studying. The uh, original conjecture duality uh, was, when this was introduced in these papers, uh, was to some boundary theory quantity called the entanglement of purification, which is some uh, sort of correlation measure between A and B. Uh, and the new conjecture that I'm going to introduce um, involves uh, various things. So it involves a generalization of the thermophil double state in ADS-CFT. So I'll, I'll sort of introduce a novel wormhole geometry. Uh, and in that geometry, I'll sort of define a new correlation measure that we called uh, reflected entropy. Um, and, uh, and then, you know, in, in this talk, I'll discuss how to prove uh, the um, correspondence. And then at the end, I'll uh, discuss some more speculative uh, ideas uh, that came up where this quantity is somehow related to the split property in continuum quantum field theory. So uh, I'll explain what this is, but basically the, uh, the uh, conclusion is that this reflected entropy is calculating the von Neumann entropy of some nice type 1 factor in the quantum field theory. Um, so I should also give you some motivation, uh, but to motivate uh, this work, I'll just cite other people's work. So the original motivation for the uh, entanglement wedge cross-section was to give some generalization of quantum information in ADS-CFT to study things that aren't just entanglement entropies. Um, very recently, uh, the entanglement of purification and this uh, cross-section story uh, has, has given new insight into the entanglement structure of, of semi-classical gravity. There's a very nice paper here uh, by these authors. Um, and another motivation that will come out of this is that uh, this quantity that we'll, we'll discuss is, gives a new regulator for entanglement in quantum field theory. Um, OK, so let me start. So to begin with, I'm going to introduce uh, something that I'll call a canonical purification. So we, uh, we consider just a mixed state uh, row. And of course, when you have a mixed state, you can always purify it with some environment such that I have some state psi, which is a pure state, and I trace over the environment, and then I get back to rho. So that's a purification. Uh, it turns out that there's many purifications. In this very example, I can just uh, rotate with some unitary on the environment, and I get another purification. Um, but, but there's a special one. Uh, and you may know this in various, uh, by various names. Uh, the standard is the thermophil double, uh, uh, but you also might know it as the GNS state. Um, so to introduce this, uh, well, uh, notice that if I think about just matrices acting on the original Hilbert space, uh, then um, that is a new space, which I can call sort of endomorphisms of H. Uh, and this space is a Hilbert space itself, right? So it's a vector space, and it has an inner product. So to, to make it clear it's a vector space, I'll put, put sort of uh, ket notation like this. Uh, and the inner product is just trace M, M dagger M. 
Um, you know, there's a basis like this that maps to, so, so these, these matrices map to some basis, and it makes it clear that this new Hilbert space is just isomorphic to the Hilbert space tensored with its complex conjugate. Um, and in this Hilbert space, we can define a purification. It's very simple. We just take the density matrix and we take its square root. Okay, so now we're thinking of this matrix as a vector in a Hilbert space, so it's a pure state. Uh, and you can check that if I trace over H star, I get back to my original density matrix. Or more, um, uh, sort of a better way of thinking about this is that I think if I just think about observables uh, in the original Hilbert space, uh, then they should have all the same one-point functions, right? That's another property of a purification. And it turns out that you know, observables in this, in this new Hilbert space, uh, uh, the original observables in this new Hilbert space are just given by the le left action of operators on these matrices. So I take O and I act uh, with the left action, and then you take the inner product and I just get the one-point functions of the original operators. So indeed, this is a purification, uh, and you can easily see that this also works if I apply unitary to the right, okay? Um, now, uh, perhaps a more familiar discussion of uh, this purification uh, involves the introduction of an anti-linear operator, T. Uh, and then given this anti-linear operator, T, on H, I can define some isomorphism between a Hilbert space, the, the Hilbert space that I was just discussing, and just two copies of the original Hilbert space. Uh, and it's defined like this, and then if I map this canonical purification over here, then you get something that you're all familiar with, is, is the Thermophil double state. Um, <clears throat> so you can use either, either description. I'm going to use this uh, square root row description, uh, essentially just because I don't have to introduce this extra anti-linear operator T, and there's some choice there. So I want to make it clear that, that there's no choice, that everything that I'm talking about is canonical. Um, <clears throat> So one important thing that's true in both of these descriptions is that there's a CPT symmetry, a very special symmetry, uh, which I'll call J. And in the original description, it just takes M and it, takes, it gives you its Hermitian conjugate. So that's another vector in the Hilbert space. Uh, and notice that the state that we're interested in, square root rho, is invariant under J. Okay. So that's sort of what picks it out as being canonical. Yes. Uh, yeah, so, yeah, so in this description, it, 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 yes, it's true that uh, to, to, to make it clear that there's no choice, I have to pick a T which acts locally. Uh, yeah, but in the original description, you never have to say anything like that. Uh, no, I don't think that's the case. Not, not in this canonical description. It, that, in, in a sense, that that's why I'm doing this. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So to define this uh, new cor correlation measure, so uh, we're going to take the Hilbert space that I was just discussing and take it to be a tensor product of A with B. Um, and then I'll take my density matrix just to be row AB. So it's just some mixed state on a bipartite system. Uh, and then I take this canonical doubling. Uh, and then I just calculate um, uh, an entropy for A, A star. So I reduce, so, so right, so when I double, my Hilbert space is now A, B, A star, B star. And then I calculate uh, von Neumann entropies for A, A star. Okay, so I trace over B, B star, I get some density matrix, and then I just cal calculate trace for a little grow. And so this is my new quantity. It's called, we, we called it the reflected entropy. Um, why do I say that it's a new correlation measure? Well, you can prove various bounds that this thing satisfies. The reflected entropy is always bigger than the mutual information, uh, which tells you that it's, it's measuring some kind of correlation. Um, of course, to actually claim that it's a real correlation measure, I should be able to prove that it's monotonic. So if I in increase the region C, you know, A, then the re reflected entropy should increase. Actually, we don't know how to prove this. It's still a conjecture. Uh, we have managed to prove it for the integer Rennie versions of this, but we can't prove it for the entanglement entropy. Um, <clears throat> Now, in this context, I can also talk, I, can, I should also introduce the entanglement of purification. So the entanglement of pur purification is just to do this where I allow for any kind of purification. So some purification with some environment. 
And then you take the environment and you split it again into A, B, little a and little b. Uh, and that split um, is, is arbitrary, and I can do it in many different ways. And then you minimize over all of the freedom here. So there's freedom in the choice of purification, and there's freedom in the split. And then you calculate the von Neumann entropy of A, little a. So little a was like a star in the previous discussion. So in fact, the reflected entropy gives you an, uh, uh, an upper bound on the entanglement of purification. Um, so that's one relation. Uh, so uh, in ADS-CFT, then we ask, you know, how do we calculate this quantity? So we gave the following picture of prescription for how to calculate this. So you take uh, the entanglement wedge, this blue region here, you cut it out, so you cut out these regions over here. Um, and then you uh, take two copies of it. So the other copy is like this starred version, like the doubled Hilbert space. Uh, and you glue it together along the, the Rutaki Nagi surface. And that produces some new geometry. Um, so, and I claim that this, this new geometry is describing this square root row, row state. Uh, and so you should think of, in this construction, you have the Hilbert space of A and B on the boundaries here, and then I have the Hilbert space of A star, B star, which are on the back side here. So to draw the picture, I'm just always taking the two copies, putting them on top of each other, gluing along here, uh, and, and then you know, I have my two A, A star here. Um, now, in reality, to do this gluing properly, I should do it as a space-time gluing. Uh, so I should, when, you know, when I was talking about the entanglement wedge, I really meant the space-like region. Uh, often the entanglement wedge is, is defined as the domain of dependence of that region. I'm always working, I'll always be working in a, a situation where I have a time reflection symmetry, so there's really no distinction between those two. I can sort of pass between them freely. Um, but in reality, what I should do is I should take the space-time region, this domain of dependence, and glue it to its, uh, it, um, to, to this, uh, um, uh, doubled uh, um, entanglement wedge. Now, when you do that gluing, actually, there's a way to do it where you uh, sort of reflect across here using a CPT symmetry. And that CPT symmetry is this J uh, CPT that I introduced before. So in particular, it exchanges the two wedges, and you get a time reflection symmetry over here. Um, so the claim is that actually the full space time that you get by solving Einstein's equations, after you glue together these wedges, you glue them together here, and then you sort of take this as initial data for Einstein's equations, and then you solve to the future. Uh, the claim is that, that full space time should be thought of as the dual of this state. Um, now, this construction is due to, to Netta and Aaron. Um, and we're just using it in this context where we have this sort of non-trivial A and B region. Uh, and why should this be the right thing for the square root row density matrix? Well, because one thing that I've sort of put in is that I, the entanglement wedge is preserved uh, over here. That means that any observables that I calculate in A and B will be preserved. Uh, that means that this is a purification. Uh, and it's a special purification because it has this symmetry. So if I act with J, I get back I get back the original state, and so that's what makes it canonical. Um, uh, uh, okay, very good. Um, now, uh, in this new space time, we can then calculate entanglement entropies just using the usual Rutaki Nagi formula or the HRT formula. Um, so, in particular, I wanted to calculate the von Neumann entropy of AA star. Uh, so that's the region here over here, but I did this gluing procedure uh, on the RT surface. So actually this point is glued to this point over here. So this is actually just a circle topologically. Uh, and so the actual entanglement entropy of AA star is calculated by the minimal surface that's homologous to, homologous to that region. And that minimal surface falls into the bulk uh, over here. Uh, and in particular, it's going to sit at the uh, entanglement wedge cross section. Um, now, yeah. Uh, yeah. So, so very good. Yeah. So, gluing along the RT surface, I, did, I didn't say it here, is a little bit subtle, and this subtlety was discussed in this paper. So, in, in particular, um, to make things consistent, this needs to be an extremal surface. Otherwise, you get singularities. 
Um, if it, even when it's an extremal surface, you get sort of discontinuities in various quantities uh, for, for gravity. So that leads to things like a gravitational shock wave that, that exists here. And in general, it's going to be pretty hard to construct things that, that it sit behind in this region, right? Uh, there might be some black hole that forms or something. It's, it's not clear. Um, so, uh, good. So, so, so what we want to do is, in this new canonical double, we want to calculate things that aren't sensitive to this blue region, because otherwise we just don't know what to do. We'd have to solve Einstein's equations. We don't really want to do that. Um, so, uh, and, and so th that, that's why we're calculating this entropy for A A star. Because, it, because it's A A star, it's invariant under this J symmetry. Uh, which means that the RT surface should also be invariant under this R symmetry, thus it should go through this point, uh, and it will never enter this region. As opposed to something like this, if you wanted to calculate some entropy, for example, you could try to calculate A star B, which is not symmetric, uh, then you would have to, in some situations, you would have to confront what's going on behind uh, th this region here. Um, okay. Uh, and so, indeed, this procedure here, uh, this, this sort of gluing procedure, gives you this entangling surface, which is then quite clearly twice the entanglement wedge cross-section. So the factor of two comes from the gluing, because there's two, there's two entanglement wedges. Um, and so, uh, so, so, the, uh, so, so our, you know, our relation is that, that I didn't write here is that SR is, uh, is um, twice the entanglement wedge cross-section. Now, we can come back to this relation between uh, the SR and the entanglement of purification. In particular, the original conjecture was that the entanglement wedge cross-section is equal to the entanglement of purification. Um, we know that there's, a, there's an upper bound. Uh, the question is, uh, can you then minimize over all these purifications and make up for this factor of two? So the factor of two means that our, con our, um, our duality is not actually inconsistent with the entanglement of purification duality. Uh, and it could be that you minimize over all uh, possible purifications and you do make up for this factor of two. There's some hints that maybe that, that actually is a consistent picture. However, you can just check um, that, uh, that um, you can just calculate EP in, for various you know, very sim simple quantum systems and SR for various simple qu quantum systems. And you can check and you can see that EP is not always equal to SR over two. Um, so, so that means that if uh, the entanglement of purification conjecture is to be correct, it has to be true just for, say, holographic theories. Um, okay. Uh, now, I should also mention that there's a really simple example uh, that, uh, so this, you know, this works quite generally for general regions A and B. Um, and so if I apply it to a simple situation where my state is just the thermal state, uh, and I take A and B to be the entire CFT, uh, then when I double, I just get the thermophile double. And my reflected region is just on the other side over here, A star. And I calculate SR, and I find these entangling surfaces that go through the horizon. If I cut it in two, and I think of this, say, left region outside of the black hole horizon as the entanglement wedge, then indeed this is the definition of the entanglement wedge cross-section in that situation. Uh, so you get, you, know, you get half the entanglement wedge cross-section. Sorry, half, the, half of SR. Um, so, so it sort of follows trivially just from the Rutakinagi formula and what we already know about thermal, thermophil doubles. Um, so, and and, and I, I like to think about this because in some sense what we've done is we've generalized what I will call a local construction to a non-local version. So w when I say local, I mean that the, the density matrix, say log of the density matrix, the modular Hamiltonian, is some integral of the stress tensor. That's true for the thermal state. It would also be true for Rindler space and so forth. Uh, and in that case, you can trivially prove this, this equality between SR and the entanglement wedge cross-section. Um, uh, but what we've done is sort of generalize this to, to non-local settings, where the density matrix is no longer, the, lo the modular Hamiltonian is no longer local. And there's a very long history of doing this. Uh, starting with uh, Bekenstein Hawking and Ru Takinagi. Uh, that's a good example. And then you can, I'll let you fill in the names here in this list. Uh, and notice that, that one name is quite common here, uh, Aitor. Um, so, uh, okay, good. 
Um, so let, let, let me discuss briefly a, um, a derivation of this, of this proposal. Uh, so um, so I'll, I'll give you sort of a path integral proof. So the idea is to consider a slightly different state. So instead of square root rho eb, we take rho eb to some other power. I'll, I'll, I'll call it m of two. So this is no longer a purification, okay? So the one point functions are going to be different. It's not a purification, it's just another state. Uh, it's a pure state in this doubled Hilbert space. Um, so uh, in this state, we can then calculate the n Rennie entropies. So I'll call those the n reflected Rennie entropies. Uh, sorry, the, the reflected Rennie entropies. So it, properly, we should normalize this state like this, and then we just calculate rho a star. Uh, sorry, I'm missing a trace bb star here. So you have to do the, the trace over bb star. Um, and then you just calculate the Rennie entropies of that. So this quantity depends on two numbers, n and m. So I'm going to take m to be an even integer. So if m is an even integer and n is an integer, it turns out that you can give a path integral construction of this. Uh, so you know, then you can use CFT methods. You can do all sorts of things to calculate this quantity. And then what you just need to do is find analytic continuations in two numbers, n and m. So uh, in particular, uh, one thing that we sort of didn't uh, make clear in the, in the original paper was that when you do this, there's an order of limits issue. Uh, this was noticed by, by these authors. And in particular, you have to take the limit n to 1 first and then m to 1. Uh, and, then, and then the claim is that you get the reflected entropy uh, and the entanglement wedge cross-section. OK. Um, now, OK, so in, in ADS-CFT, we can give a, an explicit construction of this new state where m is an, is an even integer. Um, and then in that new state, we can just use the usual root Takenagi pr procedure to calculate entropies. Uh, so, so, you know, we, we sort of do the step n to 1 using uh, the root Takenagi proposal. Um, so le let me first recall the compu computation of trace row AB to the m. Um, so it, this is the normalization, right? So if I take the inner product of this with itself, I get trace row AB to the m. Uh, and so this is calculated, uh, you know, this, this discussion is due to uh, Lefkowitz and Moldesina. Uh, and the idea is that you're trying to solve uh, Einstein's equations uh, for some geometry that I'll call BM. And then trace row AB to the m is just uh, the, the gravitational action is given by the gravitational action. Um, and this geometry uh, is some bulk geometry uh, that has some ZM symmetry like this. On the boundary, you have different replicas. So here is one replica, and this is the case M is equal to 4. And these boundary replica replicas uh, are there to, in order to compute powers of the density matrix, traces and, and products of the density matrix. So. Um, uh, so once you find this geometry, then you can calculate this, and that gives you trace row AB to the M. Um, now, uh, one important point is that there's, there is this ZM symmetry, and the fixed point of that ZM symmetry defines some surface. That surface will be, you know, like the, it, it will be the Rutaki-Nagi surface after you do the analytic continuation at M and send it to 1. Now, one important thing that I'm adding to this picture is a time reflection symmetry. So each of these wedges here has some extra time reflection symmetry. Uh, that means that I'm interested in states that are prepared by a path integral, which has some time to some moment of time reflection symmetry. Uh, and you know, I'm going to give you a proof in that context. Um, so now what we can do is when m is even, uh, I noticed that there's another symmetry in the bulk, which is also a time sort of reflection symmetry. Um, and you know, if, if, I, uh, if I think of doing the path integral up to this slice and then the path integral up to this slice, then that defines some inner product. And it's reasonable that that inner product is the inner product of rho, rho AB to the m over 2 um, <clears throat> and w with itself. So that means that I can just take half of this picture and then say evolve into real time, and that will give me a picture of this state. Um, and in particular, we can also calculate entropies. 
uh, with the state just by looking at entropies all along this fixed time slice, L looking at minimal surfaces along this fixed time slice using the RT formula. Um, we then uh, do this uh, and we tr then try to give an M analytic continuation. There's a fairly straightforward M, M analytic continuation because you realize that this uh, space BM, you can quotient by ZM, that defines a new space which you can define when M is not integer just by specifying what the conical deficit angle is here and solving Einstein's equations with the boundary condition of one replica. Um, so that defines one of these wedges when M is not integer. We just take two of them, patch them together like this. We pre pretend like there's some non-integer number of replicas down here. Uh, and then this picture uh, gives me a picture of the state row AB to the M where M is not even integer. M over two, sorry. Um, so uh, in particular, this, this is the correct, uh, th you know, th this allows you to give the correct continuation because all we really need at leading order in G Newton is some solution. Uh, we need some solution over here at, at the fixed time slice in order to evolve in real time. And it doesn't really matter what's going on over here. Uh, what does matter, what, you know, what this does determine is this, the bulk quantum state. Uh, and we discussed that in the original uh, paper, and in particular what this will do is will give you a state on this time slice, which is exactly this bulk canonical double state. Um, <clears throat> so you can also study quantum corrections to this quantity. Um, okay, so that's, that's the end. That actually proves it, because then we take m to 1, uh, and we get the original uh, gluing construction that I gave you in the beginning. Okay, so now I'm going to give you something completely different but possibly related. Um, so, uh, the, so, okay, so the, the idea is that there's some relation between this and the split property. So let me give you a brief introduction to the split property. I will not be able to do this justice. But, uh, so in quantum field theory, um, the split property is some strong form of locality. Uh, so I imagine we had two regions A and B and they were adjacent, so they, they were right next to each other then it's well known that the Hilbert space of the quantum field theory cannot be written as a tensor product of A with B. Uh, and you can understand this as, well, there's, there's various reasons for this, but the, the one that I want you to focus on is the UV issue. So there's some UV issue at this surface, which means you can't do this. Um, but if we allow for a little gap between A and B, then actually there's a pre precise sense in which the Hilbert space is, is like a factorization like this, uh, in the sense that I can take some state on A row A and some state on B, row B, and put them together and make a new state. Uh, there's sort of a procedure to do this uh, where that new state has you know, all the one-point functions of A agreeing with row A here and all the one-point functions of B agreeing with row B over here and completely no correlations between A and B. Um, so if, if I had a tensor product like this, this would be trivial, right? I just take row A tensor row B. So row A1 tensor row row B2, and that, that does this. However, uh, in quantum field theory, uh, to do this, we need a certain property of the quantum field theory called the split property, uh, and then we can do this. Uh, it turns out that, that you, this split property is really a UV issue. Uh, you can prove that you can do this in certain theories at least, and in cert for certain cuts, if the partition function of the theory is well defined at the scale determined by this length scale epsilon. Um, okay, so uh, uh, this is one, one understanding of the split property. Uh, it turns out that there's another description of the split property. Um, so to, to explain it, I need to give you, you know, an algebraic approach to entropies in quantum field theory. Um, so remember, regions uh, you can think of in, algebraic, in the algebraic approach as being associated to algebras of operators, of bounded operators. These are von Neumann algebras, and you can think of them as living in sort of the causal completion of the region. So the causal diamond here, or the domain of dependence of the region. Um, and you know, one thing to note is that, so firstly, these local algebras in these regions are quite complicated. They're not uh, related in, in any way to all the bounded operators on some Hilbert space. They can't be described as all bounded operators on some Hilbert space. Uh, in, and in some, in, in, uh, technically what this means is that they're type three algebras. 
Uh, and one way to understand it is that all the states, uh, the appropriate states in the, in, in the Hilbert space have infinite entropy. Um, <clears throat> now, uh, one thing that's important to realize is that if I take all operators on the full Cauchy slice here, I can think of that as um, all the bounded operators on the quantum field theory Hilbert space, and that is a nice algebra. That's a type one algebra. Uh, notice that we have these complicated type three algebras as sub-algebras of a type one algebra, because this, these algebras here are sub-algebras of these operators. Um, now, uh, if in this context we can define uh, a notion of the commutant. So the commutant of AB in this case here is just all the operators that commute with all the uh, all the operators that commute with AB. Um, so by microcausality, then you can see that this is going to be some wedge region like this, and AA is going to be contained in the commutant like this. Uh, but the split property, it turns out, guarantees that when you have this, an inclusion like this, and there's a finite gap between these regions, uh, then you can show using the previous condition that I told you that there exists a nice uh, algebra, type one factor, between these two. Um, and so type one is nice. You can define, uh, there's a trace. You can de define von Neumann entropies and so forth. Um, it turns out that there's, a, there's actually many type one factors that live uh, that split these algebras like this. Uh, but there's a canonical one that was constructed by Doppelka and Longo. Uh, and this canonical choice has some, there, there's some way to describe it as follows using uh, Tomita Takasaki theory that I'm not going to get into. Uh, but one th important point is that there is this CPT operator J, which will be analogous to the J that we, that we introduced before. So in this context, we conjecture that the reflected entropy that I defined is calculating the von Neumann entropy of the uh, density matrix which uh, represents the state of interest on this specific type one factor. Um, so this is some density matrix. Uh, this actually doesn't in itself guarantee that the, von, that the von Neumann entropy is finite, but at least it has a chance to be finite. Um, now, uh, so, so why do we think this is true? So this one, one, one basis for this conjecture is that you know, in, the re, in the situations that we studied, the entangled wedge cross-section is finite. What I mean by that is that the entangled wedge cross-section never came to the boundary, so there were never any UV divergences associated to it. So you, know, you also expect that there's no UV divergences associated to this quantity, so thus there, there, there should be some, maybe some duality here. But why do we, why do we you know, guess that it's more than just finiteness uh, to make this conjecture? Well, uh, you can go back to this canonical doubled, and you can find this sort of inclusion property that I, I just described to you. So if I think about uh, you know, the, the canonical doubled, which was H A, A star, B, B star, then I can think about bounded operators on H A. That's contained in bounded operators of H A A star, which is then in H A A star B star, which is then the commutant of bounded operators in H B. So this looks exactly like this inclusion that I wrote here. Uh, and um, uh, that suggests this correspondence between this type one factor and the density matrix on A A star. Uh, and in particular, there's this nice CPT symmetry, J psi, that maps to J. Um, okay. Um, now, one intuitive understanding then of the split property that you get from this is that this finite sort of entropy, this type one factor, comes because of this gluing near the boundary. So you do this gluing on the IT surface, near the boundary, you're actually gluing the boundary region to itself, which removes any boundary for AA star, right? So there's no longer any boundary on the boundary, which means that there's no place for there to be some UV entanglement issue. Oh, well, area law divergence or anything like that. Um, so this, you know, this whole thing then suggests a new regulator for quantum field theory and entanglement entropy, uh, for entanglement entropy and quantum field theory. So you know, if we're interested in the entanglement entropy of some region, we take two regions, A minus A plus, we slightly thicken this. This is sort of inspired by the mutual information regulator of, of Cassini et al. Uh, and then, and then um, in this situation, because we have a finite gap, we have this sort of canonical type one factor, 
and we can calculate the von Neumann entropy. And not only that, uh, we can give a picture of what this is in ADS-CFT. Uh, in ADS-CFT, um, we have these small regions, so, sort of S, S A minus A plus is calculated by the following root Takinagi surface that just sort of are very near the boundary here. And the entanglement wedge cross section is this blue region here. Um, and in particular, you know, this entangled wedge cross section now looks very much like the original root Takinagi surface for the region A, which is what you wanted to originally calculate entanglement entropy with. The only difference is it's cut off now. And that cutoff is you know, determined by this scale delta. So you know, there were previous conjectures along this line to use this quantity as a regulator. Uh, the new thing that we've given here is that now it's sort of computable in ADS-CFT, so you can go ahead and calculate various you, you know, universal terms in its divergence and so forth. Um, and that's all I had for you. <laughs>